Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 14 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this Let's Play series, I'm building a nice and tidy fortress with you together with lots of explanations. So, last episode, I have put some effort into our surface defenses. We have now a fully staffed out barracks that will be pretty, pretty quickly if uh, to the point where if there's going to be any siege. We got nice traps, we got a system to lock off the fortress entirely, vital at that point in my opinion, and we have the option to go for some crazy trap shenanigans if we'd want to. That's enough for me for the current situation. What I want to do in this episode is I want to prepare for the further growth of uh, glowing paints. Because we are now at the 120 uh, population mark, that means we're going to see very soon the uh, arrival of caravans with wagons. We have a baron now, as always the point when you are announced as a barony, you need a bigger entrance for those caravans to arrive, unless you don't care about bigger wagons arriving at your place. If you don't manage to have your trade depot accessible by wagons, they will come with the same packing animals as they usually do. So that's going to be the main thing today, making the trade depot happen. And also as a side topic, I want to make the city grow into its uh, new destiny, so to say. And I've prepared a little bit of something here. And this is a low priority mining job. And as soon as we're done with the surface work, we're going to go down below and continue with the city. Let's see what will happen in between. This is a Let's Play series after all, and therefore I'll complete these topics. But uh, if you want to have more, more summarized tutorials, I have a playlist for that down below too. But enough of that, let's get going. So the thing what we need to achieve here is we need to have corridor, which is uh, three tiles wide, which is... Uh, reachable for the wagon so basically some place here at the border of the map must connect to the trade depot three tiles wide so since we don't want our traders to be ambushed by outside forces you know nothing sucks more than a uh, trade caravan that gets ambushed by a dragon or something like that we want to put this uh, into the into the fortress's safety so I'm going to make now a, a trader's entrance, so to say. So we're going to put a bit of a cavern thing here. And uh, we're going to erase also those ramps now there. This is uh, no longer a thing that I want to have. They're leading nowhere. Browse upstairs. They're not uh, passable anymore so they can be removed for aesthetical purposes. So, next thing is, uh, to me personally, really important. Raise down the trade depot before I build a new one. I've had it several times that the game got very confused by the presence of several trade depots at the same time. Don't know. So, we're removing that, and now, well... There are several ways of doing this now. We can, of course, pick up the easiest one and just set up the trade depot in here. So the caravan will come in here and the trade depot will be there. We could also go downstairs and I want to do this so you see how it works. So when you want to have a uh, downstairs that's compatible to the, uh, to the trade wagon, you need rams. That's basically uh, why I'm doing this. Uh, oh, wait a sec. <laughs> Not like this. That's the wrong one. See, I'm doing it wrong myself. So it's a good thing that we do this. No, we need a channel. If you want to go downstairs, you need the channel. If you want to go upstairs, you need the ram. We don't want to go upstairs. Nope. We want to go downstairs. And technically, though, you could place down the trader's depot there as well. It would work, too. So we're making it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more shiny here and uh, make it a little bit of a hole so to say that's that and uh the hill titan so you see what i'm talking about monsters arriving while we're talking so let's see it's a towering one-eyed pig in humanoid form so we're going to check this guy out so these are well titans they are beasts that roam the landscape from time to time and uh, we're going to see if we're 
bundled forces are powerful enough. The thing about these critters is they will path into your fortress, period. So you will have to deal with them one way or another. You can now, of course, just uh, seal off your fortress like we could here, or we're bringing out the bad boys and uh, make sure that things get uh, tussled out here. I'm confident that we can bring this beast down with 20 people. So. First off, when things like that happen, we go downstairs to the city, and all of a sudden, things happen that I didn't expect to happen. Typical. Typical Dwarf Fortress. So, we're building up a burrow now. So, uh, I'm, I'm pulling this over this uh, city area here, and what I'm doing here now is I'm assigning everybody, all the civilians, into that. Boom. And then we're uh, forbidding outside uh, contact. It's just like we, what we did for the Necromancer, just for the entire fortress. All the civilians will now flock into this area to make sure that there will be no um, there will be no casualties up here. We're going to bring the the military there, and let's see how things work out. It's a Titan, so the problem with this thing is it should be immune against traps, as far as I understand things. So. Let's uh, let's follow the Titan's path. It's always a fun thing to uh, to follow these critters. And uh, like I said, you see, this thing is directly pathing to my fortress. If there is a direct entrance to your fortress, they will take it. As soon as you lock it off, they will meander around and do and, and kill everything that enters your map. So, dude is uh, now totally uh, ripping apart my war dog. And as you see here, he's casually fl uh, walking over over all the traps. That's that's Titans. So we're going to send the military in, and uh, as you see there, we're uh, we're done with them, no problem. So first thing I always like to check when some fight like that has happened, you pause the game and you notice here the the doggo has a bloody heart. That means he he he's uh, severely wounded, and uh, well, pretty pretty. That was, uh, probably I should have stationed my military here to save the dogs, but I think you got the idea how to deal with that. So, if any of these icons would be popping over my dwarves' heads, I would know that some of them were severely injured as well. Nobody got anything like that. After that, you can, of course, dig into the battle, uh, into the battle thing, but I, I really can't foresee that. There was just not much. It was a very one sided combat, most likely. Yeah. So the purple um, lines are usually the stuff that the enemy does. And as you see here, they're. Uh, the, the orange lines, the purple and the orange lines are enemy movement. And uh, every attack was just missed, miss, 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 block, jump away. I, uh, they basically just hacked that thing to pieces. Alright, so. If you feel like you're not uh, standing a chance to these, or you didn't build up your military quick enough, you can always raise the bridges and uh, say, Goodbye. Goodbye, world. We're doing this later. So, I'm, I'm quite happy how my military uh, tussled this out. I'm a little bit sad that uh, the war dogs died, but uh, we're the war dog. We're going to bind the, the elk birds uh, to this one. Because, you know, elk birds are, as a matter of fact, they're, uh, they're not hostile or anything. We're uh, actually going to um, start training these even, I'd say. For, well, in a minute, once I know which ones we got uh, <laughs> locked down there. So, Titan has been dealt with, back to business. So, to make sure that traders will be safe from things like these, we are digging this out. So, the threat has been dealt with, we're pausing the burrow now so that uh, regular business can continue. Really important. If you, if you are wondering why after a combat nobody comes to save the wounded, or why all the work is not getting done, 90% of the time it was for me the case that I just forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> remove the burrow. So, uh, what's the alert here? So the merchants need a trade depot to unload their goods. Yeah, of course. So, um, we were in the middle of a trade here, but uh, we're going to relocate that now. After all, the trade is in this scenario, not that. 
I'm mostly implementing it to to show you guys the ropes so you know what's uh, how to deal with it. There we go. So now we got that trade depot completely safe underground. There is nothing we need to worry about anymore. And uh, right, gave Croc fighting down there. Who are you, Bard? Is this uh? Are you one of my dudes or? Nah, I think it's uh it's one of the visitors. So uh well. That's an interesting thing that has happened there. We had an attack of a uh, cave crocodile there. So, well. Thing is about the caverns, it is always somewhat dangerous, you know. If you want to make sure that these things don't happen so regularly, you can always set up patrols while your people are doing a lot. I'm going to show you how. So we're selecting the future letters and uh, we're setting up the patrol order. So they're patrolling now between map points. So I'm adding point one, point two, point three, point four, and as you see, the game is automatically connecting the dots. So we're we're letting these dudes patrol a while here while all the wood is getting transported. I also remembered that I wanted to, meant to upgrade that thing, and you can then always fall back to that route. This is now a saved thing and. We can reuse it as often as we want to. It's a pretty cool thing. So we're expanding on our wood stockpiles here, of course. And the last thing that I want to do here is very, very important. A stockpile zone is totally blocking the path of these. So we're going to relocate the stockpile zone like that. It's going to live now here at the very border. So we don't have any issues with that. So let me quickly yeah, there the next uh, wave of migrants arrives. That's why I'm preparing like that, because I know how the game ticks. We are currently growing towards uh, a maximum number of 200 people. And this phase of the game is a lot about keeping up with the constant growth of your fortress. And uh, the next uh, couple of episodes will mostly will address most of these issues, because that's... Uh, Something you you just need to keep up with, you know. Otherwise, it'll uh, it'll lead to to minor or severe calamities. So we got this now sealed up. This is marking the point where we're finally done with all the shenanigans here. And before somebody has to note note out that I forgot any migrational anim migrants animals. There we go, my friends. So we got we got that elk bird here. Can we train it? I don't know if I can only train them in the cages, so that this might be a blunder. I'm trying out something here myself. So, we got that thing... Chained. Oh, once it's chained, it cannot be... Uh, it cannot be trained anymore. Okay, so we're going to train the remaining two, so we can pull this off successfully. Currently, by the way, this is a... Uh, this is a fail. This won't work. Simply because uh, the bird ain't trained and it's constantly terrified, as you see there. We're going to send one military squad to take care of that thing before it accidentally bumbles uh, into somebody and uh, we'll start a fight. Oh, I never get used to the look of uh, goblin poets roaming through my fortress. So this is a fail here, as you see there. As soon as the birds are trained, we can use them exactly like we use the war dogs. Uh, that's what we're going to do. So, the sword store dwarf is fighting. Okay, he uh, was tumbling a bit. Sometimes they they do spam out that uh, person. The person stands up uh, quite a lot. Well, doesn't really mean anything usually. Okay, so let's call out more bedrooms. And at this point. It is a lot about keeping up the commodities for all the new people hitting town. So every one of these levels that I got set up here has capacity for roughly 60 dwarves. Since our total capacity will be 200, we have here 60, 120, 180. So we will have to cram in a few more apartments here and there on these three levels, but technically my plan is to leave it like that. I don't plan to do any further um, further levels here. 
So, uh, let's see, the water is gone for a moment. Let's see if it's gone for good. We had a little bit of a flooding issue here. So, let's, uh, it's finally time to put up the last strokes to this uh, trade depot. I bet you already, uh, already expected me to whip up another bridge here so we can seal off the depot if necessary. I love to do this because I, I like to have the uh, option to seal off any areas of my fortress. It's uh, one of the things that I never did regret in any way. It's cool to have a lot of locks on your fortresses. That's why we're going to put up a, another piece of uh, bridge over here. But first, let me put down some floor. I'm personally... Um, I don't like it if, if things aren't floored. I'm keeping it to a minimum in this series because I don't want to annoy you folks with a uh, with gigaton of uh, micromanaging flooring here because I'm a floor addict. But, uh, well, you, some of you might surely understand me. So, this area here, well, I'm going to leave it as a project between this and the next episode because currently we are at 130 people no problem but uh, we have now taken care of the traders there are other things that we need to do now next so we need finally a bookkeeper that's the point usually where i actually insist on a bookkeeper uh, a lot of people go for a bookkeeper way earlier than me I personally wait until my city has grown really large out of a simple reason that I I begin to manage larger stockpiles only when the city is large enough. Before that I don't really care if I have 1100 or 1050 of something. It doesn't matter to me too much. But by now it matters a little bit more. So we're carving out a little bit of a uh, office for a good friend here. It's I heard recently that you can actually slap down a chair into a corner and call that an office and it works. I, I didn't know, but now you know. We're, uh, we're going to try that uh, theory. I always like to prove things. So we're going to put one throne here and another throne here. I just want to know how, how small things can really go. So paint, yeah, it actually works. There we go. That's the one square office if you want to go really small, but I don't want to. Just wanted to, I just meant to show these things, you know, some of you like these things. I personally, I'm a role player at heart, and therefore I, I love it when things are detailed and vibrant and the like. So, I, I don't understand why, um, why my, uh, Bookkeeper is sharing this office now, but uh, as long as things work, I don't care. Let's see. So I'm going to call a, uh, a accurate stock amount. That's okay for me. You can tone this down if you want to some less precise numbers, but uh, it should work now. So let's see what has happened since this and the last episode with those statues that I ordered. So as you see there, the value of these is slightly increasing, but since our Baron's uh, dining room is not to his liking, probably we can do something about that this way. The other way that you could go for if the rooms of your um, noble uh, noblemen are not to their liking is you can simply just enlarge them do more engravings. In this scenario here, by the way, it is just not working out because the apartments here are relatively small and the engravings are very low quality. You know, that's just the thing. There's uh, the, the people here, you, you know this one, it has a, a, a minus in front of detailed in the little info box. This is a quality marker. If there's no sign at all, it is standard quality. The worst. You know? And as you see here, there's a lot of uh, really crap shoddy work here. That's because engravers learn their uh, business really slowly. And if you want to funnel the uh, quality of these things up faster, you don't do it like I did it here. And you just go on one engraver and you power level them. The funny part about it is that... Um, Engravers get faster the more experience they grow, and I uh, personally like to have several engravers because I 
am still believing that the personality of the dwarf plays a role in what kind of art they do. And you heard me before, I'm a role player at heart, and therefore I'm interested in having a, uh, a, a variety of art styles or, or different motifs in my, uh, in my fortress. Prove me wrong in the comment section. I'd be glad if you uh, if you'd let me know if this is uh, wrong thinking of me, and uh, actually things are not working as I think. And uh, here you go. It's still leaking, isn't it? So, I really don't know how we're supposed to do this. I technically think we'd need to lock off all these three apartments, but for for now, I'll just leave it like that. Smoothing the walls here in the apartments, though. Is something I do for the increase of the value of these, by the way, if you're wondering why I keep doing this. Basically, as soon as we are done with that, I do plan to give my engravers some some opportunity to grind up some XP, because, you know, the thing is, bedroom quality is a is a nice way of boosting up your your average happiness in the in the fortress. And you might or might or not might have noticed that I pretty much instantly cancelled the patrol there. Um, that was because, you know, I know that I have a tendency while I'm recording things to forget about things. And if you forget about these dudes patrolling down there, well, if they have backpacks and flasks, they'll ask for, last for a while. If not, they can actually die from dehydration. And uh, that's why I cancelled it, because I know that I'm very prone to forgetting things in the background while I'm recording these. And it would be a shame to kill my people like that, wouldn't it? So, the elk birds are now getting trained. This is something that takes a, a while. As a matter of fact, and the funny thing here, um, you're fortress gains experience with training things and uh, basically the longer we train something the more familiar we grow with it and at some point we're domesticating animals at this point i'm just trying to get the uh, elk birds to some to some uh, level where i can use them as um, danger radars because the idea of uh, of, of pl uh, plotting down animals here and you can really take whatever you want um, is basically just to make sure that you have an animal that's detecting stealth enemies before they uh, before they hit town. That's basically the idea behind all of that. So we're going to put one boy dog in front of that again to have that function. The more critters you have, the more secure the system grows. And I've even heard of people who are plucking down animals all over the map to make sure that uh, they detect things. You can do you can do wild things in this regard. So let's get down with project engraving. So I'm personally not a big fan of having dwarf faces on all pieces of flooring. So we're just going to engrave the uh, walls of the apartments. But technically, it is most valuable if you just, uh, you know, let's do it once. If you do it like this, this way you create the most value for your apartment block because, you know, every engraving enhances the value of the, of the item. This should work, shouldn't it? Yeah. So, basically what we're doing here is we're, we're pimping up the, the value of the walls and if you don't mind the faces, like uh, if every, that every piece of floor is looking like that, you can also paste it down on the entire apartment blocks. It's up to you. So, the statue did the trick. The Baron's uh, quarters are to his liking now. So, we're going to try if a statue per room for the mayor will do the trick here as well. So, there we go. Statues are a dirty cheap way of achieving th uh, value increases. So, last time we also had a severe lack of uh, pigtails for paper making, so we're changing that as well. So, let's see. I, I need to double check on this. <laughs> this is freaking me out a little bit. So, why did the bookkeeper... I, I don't get it. Please help me out, guys, and uh, let me know if you know what the hell's going on there. 
The only assumption that I got is that uh, the bookkeeper is somehow married with that dwarf or something like that. Well, whatever. As long as she does her bookkeeping, I don't care. Okay, so it's looking quite good. But one thing that I already anticipated, the drink count slowly tumbling down. That's because this little field here is just not enough for sustaining an entire fortress. We are going to pump up the numbers here bluntly with another field, but um, we're, we're, we can also go a little bit into the uh, sacred arts of, uh, of fertilizing. So every, every field here can also be fertilized with potash. So potash is something that you can create out of uh, wood. So first we need I think if I remember correctly, it was was made at the Ashery. So, yeah, make potash from ash or from lye. So, a large rat is fighting. It stepped into the trap. Boom. So our rockfall traps are also good for something, but as you might notice here, the cage traps are all not loaded. I can't already think of why that is so. So remember the pit, beautiful thing we, we set up last time, it's full with people. So we're going to send them now down here. One of the things I personally just love to do is, you know, it's mass processing even. So we got a handful of troglodytes there, and they are the reason why we're uh, currently not able to get anything done here in terms of trapping things. But luckily we had some stonefall traps as a safeguard. And off they go. Look at them. So I I personally love magma pits for for this. This is a good system. In the next uh, episode, I'm going to introduce something that you can use alternatively if you if you don't have as uh, a, a a lucky situation as I have here. I mean, technically, you can always drill a hole down to the to the point where there is magma, but practically sometimes you need to drill the hole down 120 elevation levels and more. And that's not really practical in my opinion. Just uh, do as you see fit. And uh, next episode I'm going to set up a little bit of a processing system that you can use alternatively, but there is not enough time for that today. So we've got the traders safe. I haven't linked this to a uh, to a lever yet. This is something that I need to change. Nothing's worse than a mechanism that's not not linked. You know, personally hate that. <laughs> so we're going to set up lots of uh, of levers here. I don't care. I think it's a great thing. And uh, let's place down some nice lure tiles here. I, I am a sucker and it comes down to these things, you know, I, I love it when, when things are nicely floored and the fortress looks like a fortress and the nature is slowly not looking like nature anymore, you know, dwarven things. So we got that dude here, we're linking this lever here and we're linking this lever to the non-existent bridge there, okay. So this is going to be the last bridge for the outside region for now. I'm gonna set it up here. So we got ourselves now also an opportunity to seal this fortress off entirely. Brilliant. Okay, my friends, this is as good as it will get for today's episode. I will see to some flooring in between this and the next episode, and we're going to set up some more things that we need to do in between um, the transition of a city to a metropolis because currently we are just not there yet and if we wouldn't act immediately the fortress would be plummeting towards a dehydration crisis because one of these fields lasts you quite a while but once you grow tremendously above 100 120 150 this will be too short and next episode we're going to optimize these things so thanks for watching everybody drop me your comments down below i really really enjoy this series and i always enjoy hearing from you folks so keep it up and leave a thumbs up on this episode if you enjoyed this makes it more visible to everybody and therefore it helps a ton 
Also, if you are, feel like helping, a subscription goes a long way, costs you nothing, and if you want to stay informed, just hit that bell button and you will get a pop-up whenever some new video hits town of mine. Last but not least, check out the playlist. There's a lot of Dwarf Fortress stuff that I did by now, and I'd be happy if you'd give it a look, and most importantly, I hope you have a great time. See you next time.